There's strength and faith for everyone. As strong as you care to make it, find new faith, new strength for your life. Worship in the church of your choice. David was 30 years old when he became king of Israel, and he reigned for 40 years. Now David wasn't perfect, but he put his trust in God and served him well. And God blessed King David, and Israel flourished during his reign. After God had given him success against his enemies, a palace, <clears throat> excuse me, a palace was built for this great king of Israel. When the palace was finished and David was settled in his new home, he called for Nathan the prophet and said, It is not right that I am living in a palace of cedar while the house of God remains in a tent. Dave wanted to build, David wanted to build a temple for God to take the place of the tent that had served of God, as God's home for many years. That night, <clears throat> excuse me. That night, God get, came to Nathan with a word for David. God would have a temple as David wanted, but it would not be built by David. But that wasn't all that God wanted David to hear that night. David, want, God wanted David to hear these words. <clears throat> this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastor pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people in Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, and I will provide a place for my people, Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish the house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Imagine, becoming human was not a twist of faith or a punishment from a higher being. It was a choice. God chose to give up everything, to become, become nothing. God made a covenant, covenant of love with David that day, a covenant in which God promised never to take his love away from David or from his offspring. The line of David would remain on the throne of Israel forever. You see, from the line of King David would come the king of all kings. This king would save God's people, not just for a time, but forever. God's love is so much more than our own. And we celebrate that today as we remember how he sent his son, a king in heaven, to earth to be with us. What love is that? Our scripture this morning is found in John 14, verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. You may be seated. You can stay.
can somewhat answer the question, Mary, did you know? And that, uh, kind of. Because the scripture reminds us she pondered these things in her heart. Well, we know about the brothers of sisters of Christ. We don't know too much about the entire family. We know about his brothers. We know about James. And they came to him at one time and suggested maybe he's lost his mind. Yeah, scripture. Maybe he's, we need to take him home. And it's interesting that the church looks at James, the brother of Jesus, uh, was not what we'd say a believer. And if you read the scripture, the scripture says Christ appeared to James. Now, out of the ordinary, that doesn't mean anything. When you understand the family dynamics, that's a tremendous statement. James became the leader of the Jerusalem church and the leader of the early church, his brother. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, Jesus is missing. It's on his sign. I thought about leaving the eye off, and somebody just probably accused me of not being able to spell. <laughs> but Jesus is missing, and there's a lot of ways to talk about this. This is just kind of a, works into our sermon today. I thought about not prefacing this, but I thought I should because some might think, well, it's great entertainment. I wish I'd have known. I'd have brought some popcorn, maybe some soda pop. Maybe we should have sold tickets, but that's not the point. Each Christmas is different, and each generation celebrates Christmas, Christmas differently. And so part of this, am I on? I'm on now? Great. Now I'm on. Maybe I should turn myself off. <laughs> but each generation celebrates it a little differently. How we were, how we celebrated it 50 years, 60 years or more ago is different than they celebrate today. And so since most of us here, with a few exceptions, were born uh, before 1964, we might, we might remember this. Uh, this was a program that I've chopped down to eight minutes. I can't, I couldn't chop it any less to keep the focus. And for us, it tells us about our Christmas when we were young, when we were growing up. And it's not that, oh, I wish it was like that today. We still keep that in our memory. So, we're going to find out what happens to Jesus here. Maybe. here, but it sure brightens the place up. Burglary auto theft Friday. Yes. Yes, that's right. No, you have the right department. I see. Goodbye. The old mission church out in San Fernando. Why are they calling here? That's Foothill Division territory. They'll handle it. Well, we can make the preliminary. We're not that busy. They've had a theft. Collection money? A statue of the child Jesus. <laughs> We found Father Rojas up near the sanctuary. He told us about the crib. It was a $70 duplication of the scene at Bethlehem. The parishioners had taken up a collection for it 31 years ago. It was put up every year on December 22nd and taken down after the holy season. It was beautiful. 
except that one of the wise men had a chipped face, a donkey was old and cracked, and the infant Jesus was missing. Is there anything more you can tell us about the theft? Well, I discovered the statue was missing right after the six o'clock mass. Did you say the six? Yes, I started over to the rectory and I stopped by the crib. Was the statue there before mass? I don't know, but it was there last night. How late is the church open? All night. You leave it wide open so any thief can walk in? Particularly thieves, Sergeant. Here's the schedule. You'll find the names for every mass there. Thank you, Father. Was there a big crowd at the six o'clock mass? Not too many. Seven's the big one. People on their way to work. Just for a check on the pawn shops, how much is the statue worth? In money? Only a few dollars. We could get a new one, but it wouldn't be the same. We've had children in the parish. They've grown up and married. It's the only Jesus they know. We understand. And we've had children who died. It was the only Jesus they knew. Well, if anything turns up here, you know where to get in touch with us. Yes. It's sad, isn't it? How's that? In so short a time, men learn to steal. Yes, but consider us, Father. Us? If some of them didn't, you and I'd be out of work. We're checking the stores around the Mission Church. For what? Statue of the Child Jesus. Do most of the people who go to the Mission Church trade here? Good many of them, especially the kids. Why kids? More religious. Check on yourself. See if kids aren't more religious than you. That's what's wrong with the world. No, I don't mean you're wrong with it. Everybody. Yes, sir. I wonder if we could stick to the point, Mr. Flavin. Sure. A lot of people from the mission church come in here. Do people ever come in and sell back a religious article? Like a prayer book or rosaries? Yes, sir. Second hand, you mean? Yes, sir. Not since I ever been around. It's silly. I don't know what you fellas are looking for, but if it's somebody who stole a statue, he's crazy and you won't find him. You won't find him as long as you live. 4.15 p.m. Pawn shop detail reported back. Up until that time, no object resembling the statue of the child Jesus had been turned in. Patterson was on that Sacramento bus. I thought Bakersfield detectives were going to cover him. They did. They pulled him off the bus. You two take a run up there and pick him up. Well, that's over 100 miles, Skipper. No freeway most of the way. You'll make it up and back under three hours. Well, it'll be after six. So? We're still on that theft out at the San Fernando Mission. What are you doing messing around out there? That's Foothill Division. Let them handle it. Well, we've carried it this far. We'd kind of like to see it through. What are you looking for? A statue of the child Jesus. Somebody took it from the nativity scene. What is it, a ten, fifteen dollar chalk statue? Since when's the price determine a case? I realize it's a church statue, but that doesn't give it priority. It's important to them, Captain. Joe and I promise to get it back. What do you got on it? Well, nothing much so far. Why are you so big hearted? Captain? I'm sorry, I can't juggle manpower around so you can get a statue back. If there's time later on, we'll do our best. Yes, sir. Would you call Father Rojas out at the old mission church? Why? Tell him we're too busy to work on the statue. But we'll do it later, tomorrow, or whenever we get a chance. Why can't you call him? Well, we better get up to Bakersfield. Like you said. All right, I'll call him. Gannon, Friday? Yes, sir. I can send Johnson and Miller up. You might as well stay on that other thing. Whatever you say, Captain. Where to? Oh, I don't know. We could stay and work on it tonight. It wouldn't do any good, Joe. We won't find it. I don't think so. No use kidding that priest. Build his hopes up. Might as well go tell him now. Merry Christmas. 7.27 p.m. We arrived at the old mission church. Bill told Father Rojas how it was, that we couldn't get the statue back by morning, but we'd keep trying during the week. He said he understood. We told him we had to get on. Paquito. Padre Rojas. It's Paquito Mendoza. He's a boy from the parish. I'll ask him where he found it. Donde le encontraste? No lo encontré, lo cogí esta mañana. He says he didn't find it, he took it. Why? Por qué? Todos los años recé por un camioncito rojo. Y en este año le recé al niño Jesús y le prometí que en el primer viaje de mi camioncito. He says that all through the years he prayed for a red wagon. This year he prayed to the child Jesus. He promised that if he got the red wagon, the child Jesus would have the first ride in it. He wants to know if the devil will come and take him to hell. That's your department, Father. El diablo no, porque Jesús ama mucho a Paquito.
understand how he got the wagon today. Don't kids wait for Santa Claus anymore? It's not from Santa Claus. The firemen fix the old toys and give them to new children. Paquito's family, they're poor. Are they, Father? on that. We ought to have an altar call. Shouldn't be a dry eye in the place. I pray to Jesus. And I got a wagon. I prayed to Jesus. If you're a Dragnet fan, you know that that's kind of a replay. I think it did it in 1953. Before my time. <laughs> Even if it was, I wouldn't have remembered it. But a kind of replay. You can't you can't improve on that, on the story. And this kind of goes with our message, if you love me. This little boy loved Jesus, and he prayed. It's ir irrelevant what the prayer was, but I caught this time I prayed to Jesus. And if I got a red wagon, he'll be the first one for a ride. That's the heart of a child. We adults are far removed from that. But our hearts shouldn't be far removed from that as a child. Because Jesus reminded us unless we receive him as a child would, we're not going to enter in because a child has faith that mom and dad can do anything. Just ask them. I don't know when they finally decide. I think it's 13. That magic age at, well, mom and dad square. <laughs> but as children, mom and dad can do anything. And that's what Jesus was trying to impart to us to love him. Use that simple faith. And then he talks about moving mountains, removing trees, removing obstacles. And so when we look at the scripture, and going to be very short today. If anyone loves me. Well, there's millions of people in the world that love Jesus. Though they don't know him as you and I know him. Christmas is celebrated throughout the world, and when uh, we were in Hong Kong, and I think it's 2012, right, uh, in early November, they were setting up for Christmas, and that's interesting because that's really a uh, nation of Confucius and Buddhist and they're setting up for Santa Claus and stuff. Yeah, I know it's not Santa Claus, but it's Christ must. It's all over the world. I've read blogs where people said, I've been to Thailand. I've been all around the world where you would think that pagan people or non-Christian people would not be celebrating this. It's everywhere. Well, what is it about Christmas? Well, it's something about love because as our scripture says, if you love me, if you love me, you'll keep my word. Well, how do these people know about Jesus? Somebody went and told them. We don't care about Dropbox. We're not giving them any more money. They've got enough. Like government, always want more. Shouldn't have said that. But as we look at the scripture, what's Christmas mean? Christmas means something to us as followers of Christ, but throughout the world it's, it's something about brotherhood, meaning the love of each other. We know in 1914 that there was a Christmas truce where in a lot of places along the trench lines they had a truce, exchanged little gifts, played soccer, stopped and buried their dead. 
And then what was amazing is after Christmas, they didn't want to shoot at each other. And what had to happen is the generals had to rotate those men out because they weren't good fighting soldiers anymore. It's not that they weren't soldiers, it's we're not going to shoot at each other because the Germans knew Christ, we know Christ. Why are we shooting at each other? What a wonderful revelation. I thought about, and, I, and this is not original, I was talking to my brother the other day and I said, I don't want to become too militant, but I thought about getting a bumper sticker that I saw on a truck years ago, who would Jesus bomb? And I thought, think somebody set my truck on fire? <laughs> but it gives us pause. What would Jesus do? It's not that Jesus is here, I represent Jesus. How am I going to live my life? If I love Him, I love Him at Christmas. And this is what's part of Christmas worldwide. The brotherhood. We give things. We do things. People are celebrating Christmas that have no clue what it's all about. It's fascinating. Christians don't celebrate Ramadan, but people throughout the world that are Buddhist, that are following Confucius, the teachings of him, and and even Hindus have no clue about Christmas and celebrate it. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous? That's the power of Christ. There's a Christmas spirit worldwide. It goes back to what we saw at that Christmas truce in World War I. And you know what happened? There wasn't a Christmas truce in 1915. The generals made sure they were fighting that. Day. And that's sad. Let's go back to the scripture. If anyone loves me, that's what Christmas is all about. For God so loved the world. We, we hate to run that scripture in the ground, but there's no greater one. For God so loved the world that he did what? Jesus. Gave his only. That whosoever Amen. shall have. Paul said the same thing in just slightly different way. While we were yet without strength, Meaning we couldn't do anything of our own selves to bring us to Christ. What did God do? He sent Christ to die for us. That's beyond what we can really comprehend. <coughs> the the uh, passion. But while we were yet without strength, we couldn't do it. Christ died for us. God already demonstrated his love towards us as we demonstrate our love towards our children. Most of us at Christmas, and I know there are some interesting people out there, we generally don't give, we kid them. We tell our children, if you don't straighten up, you're going to get kids with no coal. <laughs> you're going to get a sock full of coal. <laughs> kids wouldn't know what that meant today, right? But you're going to get coal and, and uh, switches, wasn't it? Coal and sticks, wasn't it? Grandma tells her we're getting coal and, and sticks. Isn't that what it was? I don't know, I'm getting old forgetting all this. <laughs> Maybe it's good. I'll rediscover it and go, hallelujah. <clears throat> but God already demonstrated his love and we demonstrate it towards our children. We don't give them rocks and sticks and coal. We, we try to give them something that will bring joy to them. Don't we? Yeah. Maybe... It's over-commercialized. Maybe we're, we're part of it. But it reminds our children, mom and dad loves us. Where did mom and dad get that? Well, if they're church folk, they got it at church. If they're not church folk, they got it from church folk. Hallelujah. Amen. Christmas, regardless how it's celebrated, is about Christ. Look what John says. We're going to wrap up because uh, the eight-minute video says it all. Fifty years ago, a little boy in a red wagon. Fireman, I thought of Hank. <laughs> Hank, firemen do a lot of good stuff for kids in their neighborhood. They know what's going on in the neighborhood. A lot of good things. Look what John says. If you love me, do we love him? Yes. Then we'll keep his commandments. What's, his greatest, what's the greatest commandment? Love. love. Where does it start? With a, it's got to start with us and it's got to start with each other and then it flows out because if, if we can't love within the church we can't love outside of the church and we know Christmas is more and we see it on the signs if you celebrate Christmas one time a year you're missing the point 
We, we see that. We understand that. So the scripture reminds us Christ is just Christmas. Well, not the scripture reminds us, but we can allude to it. Christmas is a celebration. Christ was born for a mission down the road. It's like Mary, did you know? Maybe. She pondered these things. And I'm sure as the life of Christ unfolded, she remembered what the prophet said, what the angel said. And you, we realize at the cross, she would, have been, she would have been befuddled. But she was there at the resurrection. Do you think it all came together? Yeah, it all came together. It's as one person says, when you, when you look at the world and look around us, our government's threatening to shut down. We'll leave that as it, where it is. Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, anyway, we probably shouldn't go any further. <laughs> but we have so much hope in the world. And it stems from Christ. It starts in the church and stems from Christ. And it's like a rippling of water. It goes out and spreads throughout the whole world. The scripture says, if you love me, keep my word and my father will love him. Meaning those that love Christ. And we will come to him, to us, and make our home with us. Think of the countless stories, and I went through it real quickly this morning to refresh my mind. I didn't jot all them down, but think of all the, uh, those of you that watch the Hallmark Channel. You're full of sugar. You need to stop. You've got way too much sugar in your system. Yeah, yeah you should abstain for the next year eating anything sugar. But over and over, how many stories TV movies are about the Christmas spirit. What's the anticipation? Grumpy old dad or grumpy old grandfather throwing out the tree or the sun won't show up or the sun. Do you know why it is? With, it has to be guys. <laughs> but someone's not getting along with the family and we haven't seen him for how many years? I wonder if he'll be here this year. And so we get all these interplay of the stories, but what is the overriding message of all these movies not making fun of Christmas it's the spirit of Christmas families come together families get together and I've used this more than once and I told my brother that I realize at Christmas getting together with a bunch of old people as we see adults that's what I meant being with grandmother's house with uh, 50, 60 people shoved into a two-bedroom house <laughs> with a bunch of screaming kids. That was not an exciting time for a kid. That was priceless. As I look back, that was priceless. I didn't know how blessed I was. And I can look backwards that I was, I was blessed. And so the, the Christmas past have all built on each other it can help in our faith. It can help in our journey. Ignore what's not happening. Ignore the cultural battles. Ignore that. And think about what is going on. Someone in Hong Kong that worships Buddha is saying, Merry Christmas. You want to ask them, why are you saying Merry Christmas? <laughs> Let me tell you about it. Let's see. Yes. 
Christ was born. 